Good morning! Let's continue with our lesson. Sa method number 3 naman, percentage of accounts receivable, a certain percentage, just the same, is multiplied by your accounts receivable. This time, you don't arrive at your doubtful accounts expense. Hindi yan. But the required allowance. Yun yung makukuha natin. You have here an illustration. Assume an accounts receivable of 3 million and a credit balance in the allowance account of 20,000 before the adjustment. Doubt Doubtful accounts are estimated to be 3% of accounts receivable. Okay? Doubtful accounts expense is computed as follows. 3% of your accounts receivable, ano yung 90,000? Yan yung required allowance. Hindi doubtful accounts expense ka agad yan. Yan yung required allowance. So, 20,000 na yung credit, ibig sabihin, yan yung beginning balance mo. Kailangan mo na lang ng 70,000. Using the T accounts, let us remember and if you will recall that the allowance for doubtful accounts has a normal credit balance. So kung sinasabi ng percentage of accounts receivable method na kailangan natin ng 90, eh meron na tayong 20, ilan na lang ang idadagdag mo? 70 na lang. Putting it in another perspective, sabi ng nanay mo, punuhin mo nga yung drum, naglalabas si mother, punuhin mo nga yung drum, punuhin mo hanggang 90. Sabi ni nanay, punuhin ko daw, tinig na mo, may laman ng 20, ilan na lang dadagdag mo? 70 na lang. Mahalaga yon kasi ang dinojournalize natin na amount, yung amount na nasasali sa adjusting journal entry natin, it's not the required allowance. Kung hindi, yung doubtful accounts expense amount, yung dagdag ang may record So, 70,000 yun. So, doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts credit, amount is 70,000. Itong adjusting journal entry na to, tatandaan mo kasi ganyan lagi yung entry natin pag-record ng doubtful accounts expense. Debit, doubtful accounts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? Another illustration. Assume an accounts receivable of 3 million and a debit. This time, debit naman. Kanina, credit. In the allowance account of 20,000, same amount. Doubtful accounts expense are estimated to, the, to be 3% of accounts receivable. So, just the same. 3% of 3 million. Required allowance, 90,000. Debit balance, 20,000. So, 110. Paano nangyari yun? Taking it into another perspective using the T account. Kailangan natin ng 90. Eh, may beginning balance ka nga, debit balance naman. So, kail ilan ang kailangan mong idagdag para maging 90? It must be 110. Correct? So, just the same, debit doubtful accounts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts, the amount must be 110,000. I hope you're following. Sure, you're following. Aging of accounts receivable. This is the fourth method. The aging of the accounts receivable involves an analysis of the accounts receivable. These are classified into not due or past due. Past due accounts are further classified in terms of the length of period they are past due. Pag sinabing not due, eh, wala ka pang karapatang sumingil. It's not yet due. Pero kung nagbayad, hindi tanggapin mo. Pag past due, ibig sabihin, lagpas na dun sa designated time na kailangan magbayad siya. So kung past due siya, it may either be 1 to 30 days na sumobra na, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, so on, so forth. Alright? So, ang gagawin natin dito sa aging of accounts receivable, you simply multiply by the designated experience rate. Usually, the rates here are based on experience. Usually, 5 years. So, yung not due, ang tansya ng company, 1% doon ang hindi makukolekta. And if it is 1 million pesos, for example, then 1% of 1 million will be 10,000. Yung 1 to 30 days past due, kung 2% ang experience rate dyan, times 600,000 would be 12,000. Same procedure for all the other classifications. After mong ma-total lahat ng mga required allowances per classification, you come up with your required allowance. In this case, it is 100,000. So, sabi dito, assume that the required allowance for doubtful accounts before adjustment is 20,000 credit. Meron na nga daw 20,000. So, per aging, yung schedule natin ang aging, 100,000 ang requirement, alright? Meron na tayong 20, so 80 na lang ang idadagdag mo. Kung gagawan mo siya ng T-account, tulad din nung kanina, meron ka ng 20, kailangan mo ng 100 na required, yan yung kailangan mo, required allowance, therefore dadagdagan mo na lang siya ng 80. Ang pangalan ng T-account na to ay allowance
allowance for doubtful accounts. It is the allowance account. So, 80. Ito yung masasali sa adjusting journal entry natin. Debit, doubtful accounts expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, to recap, yung method number one natin, which is percentage of total sales, you come up with your doubtful accounts expense. Yung method to natin, which is percentage of credit sales, you come up with your doubtful accounts expense. Yung method number 3 natin, which is percentage of accounts receivable, you come up with the allowance and not the doubtful accounts expense. And lastly, yung aging natin, you come up with your allowance for doubtful accounts. That is the reason why the first two are called income statement approach and this and the last two is called are called balance sheet approach. O baliktad naman, itong illustration na to. So, aging pa rin. Paano naman daw kung 20,000 debit? Eh, di just the same. Tulad ng ginawa natin kanina. Tama ba? Kailangan mo daw ng 100,000 according to aging. Kasi nga, ang nakukuha natin po, mga kapatid, sa aging ay allowance. Pagka kasi yung first two methods ang ginamit mo, kung ano yung nakumpute mong amount, doubtful accounts expense ka agad yun. Yun ka agad yung amount na nasasali doon sa adjusting journal entry. Yun ka agad yun. Pero kung yung last two methods ang ginamit mo, allowance muna yon Hindi kagad yun yung amount sa adjusting journal entry. Malinaw ba yun? So, if according to aging 100 ang kailangan mo, eh yung allowance account mo, eh may debit balance dito na 20, eh di kakailanganin mo dito ng 120. At yun yung nasasali dito sa ating adjusting journal entry. Doubtful accounts expense, allowance for doubtful accounts. Ang accounting ay pasipagan. Hindi yan pata talinuhan. Kailangan lang masigasig kang mag-aral. Eh, alam, kita mo naman, yung mga pinag-aralan natin in the past, syempre it accumulates. Lahat nung nalalaman mo doon, tumutulong sa'yo ngayon. Pag may hindi ka naintindihan doon, sigurado hindi mo na maiintindihan. Mostly, nung mga subsequent topics na i-discuss pa natin. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig. We are watching sir, will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. Again, Sabi dito, the required balance of the allowance for doubtful accounts computed in the aging should be the credit balance of the account after the adjustment. Correct. Thus, the beginning debit balance should be added to arrive at the doubtful accounts expense. It was added, kaya naging 120. Thus far, if you remember, we have already taken up A1, yan yung provision for depreciation. A2, katatapos lang natin, provision for doubtful accounts expense. A3 na tayo, adjustment for expiration of prepayments. Adjustment for the expiration of prepayments. Prepayment or prepaid expenses is an expense paid in advance. The benefit from which is spread over a period extending beyond the current accounting period. Common types are prepaid of prepaid expenses, prepaid rent, prepaid interest, prepaid insurance, prepaid advertising, prepaid unused supplies. So with regards your A3, you have two methods involved. Pwedeng naka-asset method, pwedeng naka-expense method. Asset method and expense method. So, basahin natin. Class, ito na yung highlight ng ating study for this morning. Please be attentive. Kung ano man ang ginagawa mo, hindi pwedeng hati-hati. Kung may gagawin kang iba, gawin mo na lang yon. But if you're going to listen to our lecture, please listen. I need your undivided attention. So, asset method muna tayo. Okay? Ito na. Under the asset method, the prepaid expense is recorded as an asset. 
Siyempre, asset method eh. At the end of the accounting period, the asset account which is classified as a real account, correct? now becomes a mixed account. By bakit? Meaning, partly real and partly nominal. The used expired consumed portion is the expense element. Expired consumed or used portion is the expense element. Correct naman yun. Yung hindi pa nagagamit, unexpired, unconsumed remains to be an asset. Thus, sabi niya dito, the asset is overstated and the expense is understated, sobra daw yung asset, at yung expense ay under or kulang naman. May bakit? The two elements can be corrected by preparing the adjusting entry. Ba? Ano ibig sabihin nun? So, bago natin basahin yung sa expense method, tignan na natin kaagad-agad yung illustration ng asset method. Okay? Let's go down. Ito yung illustration. On October 1, 2020, ABC Company paid one-year rental of the office building for $120,000. Take note of the date, uh, October 1, 2020. Nagbayad ng one-year rental for the office building, $120,000. The period covered is October 1, 2020 up to September 30, 2021. The transaction can be recorded either using the asset or the expense method. Sabi natin kanina, tignan muna natin yung asset. Okay? Asset method muna tayo. Noong October 1, 2020, paano ni record using the asset method? The entry is, appropriately, debit prepaid rent, credit cash, 120,000. Correct. Walang kapaltos-paltos. There is no blemish with that journal entry. Pre prepaid rent, 120,000. Credit cash, 120,000. That is on October 1. One. So, noong October 1, 2020, ginawa itong journal entry na ito, nung ginawa yan, walang kapintasan, correct yan. But the problem is, kung hahayaan mo na ganyan, yung journal entry na yan hanggang December 31, 2020, dun ka magkakaproblema. Kasi by December 31, 2020, totoo ba na ang prepaid rent mo ay 120,000 pa rin? Hindi na totoo yun. Why? Because October, November, December has already expired. Meaning to say, out of the one year na binayaran mo, tatlong buwan na ang nakonsume na gamit or nag-expire. Kung noong October 1, tama yan. Noong December 31, hindi na lalabas na tama yan. If you do not prepare, the necessary adjusting journal entry. Totoo ba kasi na yung 12 months, eh 12 months pa as of December 31, hindi na totoo yun. Kasi only 9 out of 12 na lang ang asset portion. And 3 out of 12 already expired. Are you following? So, ibig sabihin nun, 3 out of 12 times 120,000 or 30,000 must be recognized already as an expense. How do you recognize an expense? normal debit balance ang expense. So, debit, 30,000 rent expense. Credit, prepaid rent, 30,000. Naintindihan. Nung dinebit mo yung rent expense, ini-increase mo. Nung credit mo yung prepaid rent, dinidecrease mo, binabawasan mo. So, as of this point in time, kung nakadebit ng 120 doon at i-credit mo ng 30 dito, eh, pag kinuha mo yung balance niyan, eh, di 90,000 na lang yung asset portion, which is the correct amount of the asset prepaid rent. Later on, may analysis pa tayo dyan dito sa baba. Okay? May mga T-accounts tayo dito. So, anong sabi? Balikan natin yung definition kanina. Yung paragraph na yon. The two elements, dito. Thus, the asset is overstated. Correct. Napatunayan na natin. As of December 31, overstated na yung 120. Kaya natin, inadjust ng 30. Alright? And the expense is under. Correct. Kaya natin inadjust, nag-recognize tayo ng expense na 30,000 by debiting the rent expense. We have increased the rent expense. The two elements can be corrected by preparing an adjusting entry, debiting the understated expense, kaya tayo nag-debit ng expense kanina, and crediting the overstated asset, kaya tayo nag-credit ng asset account kanina, which is the prepaid rent. This was the original entry. This is the adjusting journal entry. Original entry, adjusting journal entry. 
So we have learned something. At times, it is important to know what the original entry was para magawan natin siya ng correct adjusting journal entry. So tuloy tayo, expense method naman. Under the expense method, a prepayment of expense is recorded as an expense. Expense method nga. By debiting the expense account. At the end of the accounting period, the expense account which is classified as nominal account, correct, now becomes a mixed account, meaning to say, partly real, partly nominal. The unused, unexpired, or unconsumed portion is the asset element, while the used, expired, or consumed is the expense portion or the expense element. Because of this, ayan na naman, gumagawa ng conclusion. The expense is overstated and the asset is understated. Okay, tignan nga natin. Same illustration, class. So, parehas pa rin. Ang sabi, October 1, 2020, nagbayad ng one-year rental. Magkano? 120,000 for October 1, 2020 to September 30, 2021. Nagbayad. Nung nagbayad siya, ang sabi naman niya, debit rent expense, credit cash. So, baliktad kanina. Under the asset method, ang sabi mo kanina, aba, asset ko to, sabi mo. Ito naman, under the expense method, ang sabi mo, kinilala mo siya buong buo as expense na kaagad under the expense method sabi mo eventually magagastos ko din to or magagamit makukonsume ko din so might as well recognize it as expense at once yun yung sabi mo dito under the expense method so debit rent expense credit cash 120,000 once again nung October 1 under the expense method nililinaw ko under the expense method there is nothing wrong with this journal entry mamamali ka na lang kung hahayaan mo siya ng ganyan hanggang this December 31. Kasi nung October 1, sabi mo, ang rent expense mo, 120,000 eh. E pagdating ng, ng December 31, totoo ba na ang rent expense mo, 120,000? Hindi. Kasi ang katotohanan, only 3 out of 12 has been consumed, used, or expired. So same computation. Only 30,000 is the actual expense. So an adjustment must be made. Sobra yung rent expense mo, kaya kailangan mabawasan. Sabi mo, 120 ang rent expense. Eh, hindi naman eh. Tama? 30 lang ang rent expense. So to make the 120, 30, ilan ang kailangan mong bawasan? Ibawas. 90. Kaya nga nakakredit ng 90 yung rent expense. Naintindihan mo ba? And you must recognize that that same amount is, is still unconsumed. Tama? Di ba? 9 out of 12. Is it still unconsumed? That is the 90. That is why you are debiting the prepaid rent. It must be stated that the theoretically sound method is the asset method. You must recognize it as an asset kasi hindi mo pa naman siya nagagamit. Nonetheless, there still exists the expense method. That's why we are dealing with it. But the theoretically sound method is the asset method. Further analysis. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day. Imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos uh, bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So, with that, See you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.